Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another Mortal Kombat Storm Collectibles unboxing and figure review and today is a very very special day because as you can see here we have six of our coloured ninjas we have Sub-Zero, Rain, Scorpion, Smoke, Reptile and Noob Cybot and today we are doing currently the seventh and last colour variation of the ninjas it is Air Mac himself, which is the it's a large amount of souls that have been gathered by Shao Kahn and put into a singular body. The main one of which is Sindel's former wife, or former husband, not wife, he was the husband to Sindel, who was his wife, King Jared, and also father of Katana. Um, but I think somewhere along the timeline, that little... That old tidbit got um, erased and ignored um, because he... They haven't really done anything with that storyline. Um, other than the part where Shao Kahn got killed and his soul was thrown into Ermac and then Shao Kahn and King Jard's soul fought for control of Ermac. So that is the story that I know of Ermac. Um, also, he started off in Mortal Kombat 1 as Ermacro. Um, and also, there was no Air Mac. That was all just a big internet hoax rumor. Um, no, there's there's no way to get Air Mac in Mortal Kombat One. I'm afraid if you were hoping for that, uh, sorry to disappoint you. So this is the San Diego Comic Con 2018 exclusive. So a little while ago now, and he is quite rare, quite a little bit difficult to get hold of, but he has some very very awesome accessories which we will be looking into, and I'm looking forward to this one. So let's look at the back of the box. So as you see, he has the interchangeable mask from the Mortal Kombat 1 to the Mortal Kombat 3 variant. He has the um, soul balls, okay. Uh, Scorpion, is, uh, Scorpion is only for di display images, not included in the package. Thankfully, we've got one, and he will be our little test subject today. He's the telehang effect and the tearing arms effect. And now let's look at the blurb. Air Mac is an entity composed of legions of souls fused together by Shao Kahn sorcery. His presence was noted by warriors since the last tournament, though only a few still live. Um, meaning that uh, Air Mac is like a very, very good assassin because anyone that sees him doesn't continue to live. Now we've got a little bit of a hole here. Um, right, let me lower the camera down so that uh, you can see everything, but uh, yes, a little bit of a tear in the hole here um, of the cellophane, but I think other than that it is in very, very good condition. Um, so let us open this bad boy and release Air Mac into the world. And I can hear many, many ranked players screaming, No, please, no, not the Teleslam again. God, no, that was a horrible, horrible time. Is this a second copy? There we go. It just peels off there. This comes down. It should. Uh, a little bit of a tangle there. And there we have it. And it peels off, and then we shall peel this off the top, like so. And there we have our very, very beautiful and very lovely Storm Collectibles Um What I have just noticed here is this is actually, if I can get the light to shine on it properly. Yeah, there we are. That part there is gloss, and the background is matte, which gives this very, very cool little effect on this side of the box. Um, and similar here, as you can see. So that's some little cool designs in the package. Get rid of that. And this should be brand new. He is. So it is sealed at the top here. So we shall get the joy of cutting this part open. And now Air Mac. I mentioned in the previous video that I don't think these scissors are particularly sharp. 
But with that, Ermac should be released into the world. Tiny bit of a tear there. That's my fault. That was my mistake. Oh, um, it's, you always have to be very, very careful with opening these. And um, opening them at an angle is not the best idea. You know what? I'm going to do this off camera. Sorry about this. But um, it is very, very tight in here. I don't want to risk damaging the box any more than it already is. Um, having a little bit of a problem. You might be able to hear some of the issues that I'm having. Um, hmm. Well, I can guarantee that it's never been opened before because no one else would be. Oh, there we go. There, finally. There. Right. So, finally got there in the end. Let us pull this part here. And we shall pull out Ermac. We shall sit there. And then we'll put this back down. And the inside of the box, it has this green effect around it, similar to the Reptile one, but I think this is meant to be more like Air Max Soul ability rather than anything else. So another cool little piece there. And let us see this Air Mac. This pulls up at the corners. And there we go. And there we have our seventh ninja, the red one, who looks sus. Uh, for anyone that enjoys playing um, Among Us, those of you that are watching this 20 years from now and are wondering what the hell Among Us was, it was a very, very popular game back in 2020s. So, um, he has the butterfly joint effects, as per usual. Um, again, a little black line that I hadn't noticed before uh, we did the rain review. The head is on the swivel, moves left and right. Also, this one is very cool because he has the green eyes and everyone else there all has the white eyes, apart from Reptile, who is currently unmasked and has his red eyes. And obviously Noob Saibot, whose eyes are entirely black because he is a revenant. Um, so he should have the body crunch, yes. Uh, the shoulders, move out, so you can get that perfect T-bose. Um, it's on this butterfly join as the same with every other ninja and we have the bicep swivel and the same on this side the double elbow movement so you can get that boxing technique oh this this elbow here that doesn't look quite right that, that looks kind of dangerous hmm i'll need to be careful with that um, yes, there it, not unless that's a pain defect. Is that all it is? Hmm. It certainly isn't like that on the other arm. Like the other arm is just fine. But that one, it's a little bit dodgy. Um, I don't really want to go risking it any more than that. And I won't. But, hmm, that's interesting. And that is exactly the way it came out of the box. You can actually see that there's a little bit of a gap there between this part here and this part here, which isn't the same on this bit here. This bit is much more solidly on. Oh my goodness. Um, that was the hand falling off because I was showing off the elbow joint. Just give me a second. That clips right back in, no problems. But um, hmm. this is why you should always check your figures before you do anything with them. Uh, Air Mac is quite expensive, so I don't really want to go breaking him. So I won't be playing too much with that a little bit. Um, which does hinder some of the things I can do with him. But I wasn't planning to have him with his arms all the way up anyway. Hmm. Really annoying. Uh, they have the body swivel and also the waist swivel as well. As you can see. Also moves. This is all soft rubber, so once again, if you wanted to, you could have these parts off. Don't know why you would. Wouldn't recommend it, but you can. Uh, the legs should be able to go into a perfect split. 
and there you have it. It's on very nice tight joints. And the double knee swivel to here. And again on the other side, exactly the same thing. This one's a little bit stiff, but stiff is fine because stiff means that it will stick when you pose it. Uh, the angles move to the left and right. You also move up and down. Uh, it has that rotation. And also the feet have the little top of it so that you can put them into the little poses that you want. And there we have it. That is Air Mac all ready to go. into a nice little pose before we look into the accessories. So uh, Mr. Airmag, you can sit there. Um, difficult to do one-handed, but his feet just don't seem to be in... We had the same similar issue with smoke, where uh, unless you had smoke in a very, very specific um, pose, he would always fall backwards. Okay, there we go. Hmm. Sorted now. Hmm. Your mic's a little bit strange. A little bit funny. But uh, that's quite alright. And uh, there's the the money shot for anyone who can see all the all the different Power Rangers of uh, the ninjas. All the different colours of the Among Us characters. And let us look at the accessories. So let's go over the hands first of all. Same as always, you have the grip hand for holding an item. You have the karate hands. So the grip hand, you only have that for the right hand. The karate hands and everything else, you've got the left and right. So you can have those. You have the open grip palms, as so. And you have the tiger grip hands. Once again, as so. So the hands out of the way. Uh, you also have the Mortal Kombat 1 accessory. So with uh, all the other ninjas, it's exactly the same. The mask just pulls off and this one goes on. I'm not going to show it in this one, but you can see it in almost all of the other videos. So let's look at these. So this is the very, very cool accessory. These are the arm rip-offs. So, um, to show this off, these work exactly the same as the other arms. Very stiff. Like, very stiff. Um, hmm. Okay, no, it loosens up a little bit. Yep. But very stiff initially. It might just be because it's um, made several. Well, that one moves much easier. But... We're going to show these off in just a little bit. Uh, we have the telemass, uh, the telechoke, which is used for when he does the move, he does this, and then the opponent goes, uh, tush, tush, tush. Um, and this is just the representation of that that goes around the person's neck. And then we have the soul balls, um, if I can get into them. Uh, but they are, oh my goodness. Sorted. That is how to get into them. And these are the telekinetic balls. And the way that these work is they should split in half, I believe. There we go. Just little clips here that you can see. And they just push back together. And what these do is you just put them over any hand and then it just clips around and it gives the look that Air Mac is using his uh, soul abilities. So let's just clip this one on here to this hand. As you can see here, I'll just do it on camera for everyone. It should just go over the hand without going over the wrist. And then it should just close over nicely. And there you have it. And the same with the other one. So let's just do that. You can just press the sides in it just comes over, and then this just should just go over the hand, like so. So you just put it over the first hand, like that. Or you just put the first one over the hand, like that. Over the first hand. And then press this together. 
and there you have it. Uh, Airmac is ready to use his psychic telekinesis abilities. And as said, we are going to need a test subject for this one. And today's test subject is going to be the San Diego Comic Con, Mr. Scorpion. So, first of all, let's show off the telekinetic chokehold. So the head just pops off. A little bit stiff, but it does pop off. Trust me, it does. I know it does. There we go. Um, don't worry if it is a little bit stiff. Don't force it because you don't want to break this part, but just keep using a little bit of pressure and just apply it and just use a little bit of movement, but don't just rip because that's how you break your fingers. And we don't want to go doing that, especially not with ones as expensive as this. So the telekinesis chokehold, I don't know whether it goes that way or this way. No, no, it's definitely the other way. I had it right the first time. Yep, that looks much better. And as you can see, it lines up along with the shoulders. You can see where the front and the back part is. And then the head just clips back on. There you are, with a nice solid click. And then you can have Scorpion being choked by Airmac. into a, a little uh, action pose here. Just tilt this leg around a little bit. And there you go. That's, that's how that works and have something like this to make it look like he's actually doing it. Um, so that's the first cool part there. That is the soul ability, but this is the part that um, I have been looking forward to because you've seen some very, very cool photographs with this on the internet. So this part here, you pull off the arms here, which seems very, very um, stupid. You generally don't want to do this, but um, with these figures, it is acceptable, it is okay. So you just, again, give it a good pull and it just comes off at the butterfly joint exactly like that and the other one just clicks in where it should I'm just checking making sure that the San Diego Comic Con one isn't a different ball joint so um no okay no I think they are the same I thought this one looked a little bit bigger but you know I think I'm just imagining things so um this part here the flesh part, that will come out. So you want to keep that part in. And I'm just going to move this up a little bit, make it easier to press in. That does clip in like that, and it still moves. It still has the movement of up and down. And the next arm, I'm just going to do the exact same thing here. And this is to represent uh, Air Max Fatality where he uses Psychic Ability and rips off the opponent's arm. Ah, well, that's okay. Um, so what's happened here is the arm has came off and the butterfly joint is still connected onto here. So that should be able to come off. Um, it does look pretty solid on there. You know what, maybe I'm just going to leave that on there for just now. We'll just attach the other arm, see what it looks like without the um, the flesh part there. This should just clip in like so, and yeah, it looks perfectly fine without the flesh part in it. So um, there you go, and then you can have the arms spread out like so, scorpion like this, and. Obviously, there's no part here to cover these parts. So what you want to do is just have those off screen, like so. And that is how you make it look like um, he's doing the fatality. So if we do something like that and maybe pose the 
the toes up. I don't know if I'll be able to get him to stand on his toes, but we'll try. Mm, no, okay. Uh, it probably could if I spent some time with it. But if I do something like this, and obviously I want to have Ermac above his opponent looking down on him. Something like that. And then if we have the hands over like so, and like trying not to touch the camera because that's exactly in the pose I want to be. Then there, if you take a little screenshot just right there, that looks perfectly like Ermac is ripping Scorpion's arms off. And that is how you can do that very, very cool little fatality pose there. So, um, yes, that is our Ermac, and that is our seventh ninja. So, as always, uh, we will finish this up with a little size comparison using our brand new figure, Ermac. And Scorpion, you can stand right there in the background whilst we're doing this. Um, so first of all, let's move Ermac back up to standing pose so that you can see. And then you can gaze into the soul of the camera. Um, generally in photography and uh, video, you're not supposed to look into the camera because it upsets the people at home. Um, but that is what we're working with. So, um, unfortunately, just gonna have to that. so there's no point in comparing with any of the other ninjas because obviously you know they're all the same height. So here is Cyber Smoke, who is a little bit taller than Ermac. Let's bring in uh, from the uh, wrestling line the Storm Collectibles Hulk Hogan, which is a pretty good match for the ninjas, Ermac included. Next up, we'll bring in a the Tekken line of Strong Collectibles, and Kazuya is quite a bit taller than Ermac. And we'll bring in a Marvel Legends line. This is Shang Chi, the Master of Kung Fu, which the movie is coming out at uh, some point this year, I think, or is it next year? And as you can see, the Marvel Legends line is a little bit shorter but not by too much that it would bother you. Uh, next up we'll bring in the McFarlane line of the Mortal Kombat figures, which is a very, very good range, a very good height comparison. As you can see, uh, Katana and Baraka are just a little bit taller than what the ninjas are. Only a tiny bit. Nothing that would put you off if you were displaying them next to one another. And now it is time for boss characters. So let us bring in Ermac's boss himself. He is the Emperor of Outworld. He is not King, he is Khan. He is Shao Khan. And as you can see, Shao Khan does tower over Ermac and also has a problem standing. Which he normally doesn't. He normally stands pretty well. It's a bit unusual, but there we go. His legs must have moved in some way. As you can see, Shao Kahn does tower over Ermac, as he is supposed to. Next, let's bring in another boss character, the Prince of the Shokan, Goro himself, who is absolutely ginormous, as you can see. But Goro is meant to be quite massive. Uh, Goro also has a problem standing here. Um, I'm beginning to think that the table is maybe a little bit off balance or such. As you can see, Gore doesn't even fit in the screen. <laughs> and last but not least, let's just bring in the Mortal Kombat 3 boss, Motaro, who I don't even know if I'll be able to get in the scene here. Just barely, just barely. There we go. And as you can see, Motaro is quite, quite huge, as he is meant to be. So let us just remove these, and we shall stick with 
just the ninjas for a little bit at the end. So that is it for this video. Um, I do hope you enjoyed and you can look back on the channel and find all of these other ninjas. They are all on there. Um, and if you have been with us through this little journey of... Oh my goodness, moving the phone. If you have been with us in this little journey of getting all the ninjas, then uh, thank you very much for coming along for the ride and experiencing with with me um, the opening and the collecting of these little characters. We do have quite a bit more to go, so we do have more to look forward to in the future. But that is our ninja line finally finished. So, once again, thank you very much for coming along. If you did enjoy the video, please give us a like, share and subscribe. It's a small click for you, but it means a lot to me. And we will see you all in the next video. So, goodbye everybody!